Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our service today. I hope everyone's doing well. <clears throat> um, we've been missing you guys. Uh, it's been terrible. It's been really terrible not to be able to get together. Um, but I just want to thank everybody who's been doing the work to make sure that we can still do this electronically. And I know that everyone is tired of um, having to see videos to get updates. And so I thought I would do something a little different. And so what I want you to do is guess where I would have to be standing right now in Interlaken uh, to have the view that I have right now. Um, if you have a guess, put it in the comments below. Hey, kids, do it too. Don't let your parents have all the fun. Kids get in there. Guess where I'd have to be standing right now. If you, end, if you get to the end of the video with me today, uh, I'll give you a panorama and I'm, then I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, but for now, we wanted to give some updates. The church leadership's been meeting every couple of weeks. We wanted to give updates. Um, we know how frustrated everyone's been. Um, we've definitely gotten a lot of input from the church on both sides about when we should be coming back. And um, so we've taken this very seriously. We've been meeting, um, really hashing out what this would mean. What does it mean to come back? What's the right time to come back? And it's hard. We don't have all the information just like Everybody else doesn't have all the information, and it's been really hard to come up with a great plan. So today's um, update is more about transition between now and whenever the right time is to come back. Um, we, don't, we don't have a date set yet. That doesn't mean it's months away. It just means there isn't a date set yet. So um, while we don't have a date, we wanted to sort of get started on the path for like, what would it take to get back together? So. Um, one thing that's become really clear as the elders have had to get together and, and hash all this out is that um, COVID has shifted from a virus to something political and something that can that is dividing the country again and 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 it's dividing some churches too. And as you discuss it, you you realize why. There's a lot of moving parts to this. There's a lot of things you have to consider, and it's it's just a really hard decision. So you can see why it's divisive. And so our um, conversation has quickly gone from, you know, what do we have to do to get back to what do we have to do to be unified in coming back? We, it's, it's just clear that that's the most important thing. And, and Pastor Jesse brought us um, to Philippians 2 this week when we were together. And I would encourage everybody, as soon as this video is over, open up your word, open up God's word and go to Philippians 2 and read about um, how we're supposed to think and how we're supposed to be unified. And um, that's really stuck with me since he brought us to that again. And it was like, it was uh, not, not doing anything out of selfish ambition, but um, really being humble and maybe giving up some of your own pride and giving up some of your own rights so that everyone in the body can um, be unified. And that's really what unity is. Unity is not, we dictate what you do, therefore you follow. Unity is, how do we stay together? How do we, how do we do this together? And it almost always means someone has to give. And in this case, a lot of people are giving. And I got to see mature, um, God-loving men who feel very passionately about this subject have to t be able to talk about that, but also say, but how are we going to be unified? How can we come back from this? And to see them give up some of their rights and some of their thoughts to be unified, um, I tell you what, it brought me to tears the other night. It really did, and, and I don't think the guys even knew it, but it brought me to tears when certain things were said because it was clear these are very intelligent guys, they're very passionate guys, but still willing to do the right thing at the right time for our congregation. So uh, very blessed by that. And so we're, we're transitioning now then into what we hope is coming back. Um, and we, need, we want to start with two things. One, we have a giant building that's big enough that we can socially distance and keep each other safe pretty easily. Uh, it's going to take some work though, and it's going to take some physical plant type work. How do we get the building ready? And step one is what we want, really want to do in the next week or two, and that's clean up uh, the, the summer sanctuary area. There's a lot of surfaces to clean, there's a lot of carpets to vacuum, all that kind of stuff, and really get sanitized and good. 
uh, and just make sure it's ship shape make sure it's it's in a state in which we can be out there so that's really what we want to do with phase one if you're willing to help with any of that um, please contact Dick Ross he's gonna be the one that will set up a time for you make sure the cleaning supplies are there make sure you have what you need so that um, even though we won't be doing a group day where we're all together you could come maybe as a family and and start working on the building with us so that's part one part two is starting next week we want to encourage everyone to start having watch parties now what that means is you get together on Sunday morning uh, maybe a couple families um, following whatever the current guidance is whether it's 10 people or more but following the curtain guidance get together and sing the songs together watch Eva's Sunday School together and uh, watch the sermon together and really start to we're gonna use that as a jumping off point uh, sort of a transition back to um, really coming back together all together. Now I'd encourage you each week uh, that we do this, you know, mix it up, have different people over or um, do, it with, do it with different families. If you're unsure about who you should go to because of safety reasons or risk reasons, Keith Powers is the one to contact. He's the one who's helping sort of facilitate that and make sure that you get set up with the right family that has room for you and can meet the needs of whatever it would take to make sure you're safe. All right, so we're just encouraging everyone again, do it the right way, do it the safe way, but get together, watch the whole service, uh, discuss the whole service, and maybe eat together, whatever. Um, I, have a, I have a personal um, thing I wanna charge you with on that. We've seen in the Christian community for sure there's a lot of passion and there's been a lot of passion around COVID and the church is getting back together right I really want you to use those times if you can if you can bring your heart to it because you're gonna have to pray through it is come together and say God you've given me this passion because he did he set you up with that passion he wants to use that passion he wants to use it for good he wants to use it for him his ministry don't lose it but put it toward Christ and his ministry what can you do going forward outside of COVID? Because COVID's a temporary thing, right? But you've had this passion in you for weeks now. How can you utilize that for his word going forward? Because while the decision about COVID feels huge, honestly, how we use this time right now and do become unified and do bless each other and do strengthen each other gives us a church that for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years is stronger and has a much bigger impact in our community. And that's, that's way more important than this decision right now. But we can use this time to strengthen ourselves and tell each other that when you're together, when you're sitting around looking at that screen again, say, man, God's got this fire in me. I want to do something. Talk about it. Talk about what you could do for his ministry going forward that would be um, effective for him. And you're going to have to ask him. You're gonna to have to pray and say, God, what do you want me to do? But this is a perfect time for that. Take advantage of it, get excited about it. Don't just focus on the politics of this. The politics of this are gonna go on forever. And they'll, every side is gonna be wrong. The only side that's right is Christ. The only word that's right is Christ. The only source of truth is Christ. Depend on that. Go to that over and over and over and over again. He'll transform your heart, he'll transform your life. He'll take you out of this depression, this muck that we're in, all right? so. I just challenge you, take, still take advantage of this time and use it for this church, use it for Christ, okay? All right, so I don't have anything else, so I'm gonna try to give you a quick panoramic view so maybe you can do a little better guess. So here we go. I can tell you one thing, I am in a spot where social distancing is not a problem because there ain't Nobody else getting anywhere close to me. All right, so put your guesses in. Contact those two elders if you need anything. If You can contact us anyway if you need anything. And contact the pastor too. So this was the uh, announcements portion of the service. There's song portion of the service, there's Sunday school portion of the service, and there's a message portion of the service. All right, so make sure you get all those videos in today. Start praying. Figure out what are you going to do next week? Are you going to have somebody over to watch together? And start praying, God, what are we going to do going forward? How can you use this passion in me? How can I realign my priorities 
so that they're your priorities forever now. I don't want to go back to the old way where I was too busy for you. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, ready. I want to do this for you, God. Um, I, just pray, I just pray that this week will be a blessing to all of you and that each of you will take this seriously because I think we can do something really awesome. All right. God bless you all and uh, God bless the service.